The Canon G5X Mark II is a pretty big update to the long-standing mini DSLR point-and-shoot camera line by making it less DSLR and more basically almost exactly the same thing as their other point-and-shoot camera that I don't, you know, like very much. Cough, cough, G7X Mark III. This has a long zoom, fast lens, and uncropped 4K. On paper, it actually sounds pretty good. But how does it hold up in reality? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. The G5X Mark II is a pretty odd camera. Now, it's vastly different than the original that it's built on. I mean, so much so that I think that this is really almost a whole new camera line. It should be called something else, but I, mean, but I actually really like this camera way more than I like the G7X Mark III for a few specific reasons, even though they share a lot of the same DNA, like, a lot of the same DNA. But before we get too far into the video, however, I would like to thank my friends over at BH Photo for loaning me this G5X Mark II for the next few weeks to make this series of videos on. Now, if you'd like to get your very own powerful little zoom camera, there will be links in the description below. And really quickly while we're at it, let's throw this up on the sticks so this can be the B cam for the rest of the video and you could see how it would work for a YouTuber camera. There we go, point and shoot camera e goodness. Now, if you saw my previous video, I do not like the G7X Mark III. It's missing some very key features and is giving me a lot of overheating problems that an almost $800 camera absolutely has no room to exhibit. Like, it does not. Plus, I'm not a photographer at all, so if you were hoping to learn about photography here, well, good news, there are plenty of other videos out here, but I focus on YouTube online content creation so I focus on video. And in my opinion, the reason the G5X2 escapes the same conclusion as the 7 is it does have some uniqueness and features that honestly, no other camera that I've come across has. First up, if you've never heard or seen a video on the G5X Mark II, let's cover the basic video specs to get us all on the same page. We gotta be all, we all gotta know what we're talking about. The Canon G5X Mark II is a small point shoot camera with a one inch 20 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor. It can record in up to 4K 30 frames per second and can do 1080p at up to 120 frames per second for slow motion. Now under the hood it is rocking Canon's Digic 8 image processor and the most exciting and useful feature on this camera in my opinion is the 24 to 120 millimeter equivalent zoom that's 1.8 at the wide and 2.8 at the zoom. Like you're not gonna, where else can you find that? Seriously. Tell me where else you can find that. But a big deal breaker here for the video folk out there, again, no 24 frames per second, period, in any way, shape, or form. My only explanation here is that Canon is waging war on the online trend of everything being cinematic and is trying to kill the format off because that I can't think of why else. And you know what? I appreciate the bravery that they have in this effort. I don't appreciate it. It has some physical differences from its 7 series cousin that we'll cover more in a bit in the ease of use category, but video recording wise, the biggest difference is the lens. And that's a great segue into the video quality. And again, the lens is the most exciting part about the whole darn camera for me. It is rare, really rare to find a point and shoot with an extended zoom that also has a bright 1.8 aperture at its widest. Now take the Sony RX100 Mark VI for example. It has an even longer zoom, it goes 24 to 200 millimeters, but it's 2.8 at the wide and 4.5 at the zoom, plus it's missing the built-in ND, which the G5X does have. So that makes this lens really the selling point of the camera. Now it's probably one of the most versatile pocket cameras currently on the market. Like, I was kind of angry about this camera when I was so disappointed with the 7, but I, it's very, the G5 is very versatile. I mean, the image quality, I think, actually looks better than the image quality on the G7. It has a crispness to it that I really like, and I know sometimes the longer the zoom, you can deteriorate that image, but it, it looks great. I mean, plus it's always nice to use a Canon camera, and while I'm not necessarily sold on the whole Canon color science thing, I think it looks pretty good. Like, I do think it looks pretty good. Now it has an HDR video mode that does set the camera to, re to record the maximum amount of dynamic range capable. In my experience though, this isn't like a log mode or a raw video mode or a separate HLG mode. It basically just sets the camera to an automatic mode that tries to get as much parity between the shadows and the highlights as possible. I mean, it doesn't do much except except stop the aperture down, so it's not that useful. When it comes to straight up video recording though, the biggest negative that I have with the G5X, much like the G7X, is this lacks Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which just sucks. 
Canon thus far has never ever won on a spec sheet. I mean, they're generally in the low middle when it comes to overall hardware included inside of their cameras. And for me, that's okay. I mean, you can still get a great image. And for the most part, their cameras are some of the easiest in the world to use. And that's where these point and shoot cameras are failing. They miss the one feature, the one aspect that people come to Canon cameras for, and that is the rock solid autofocus. Now, the contrast based system in this is functional, but it's not something that I would hang my hat on or rely on. I mean, I haven't had the same problems as I do with the G7X when it constantly loses my face when trying to record, but I mean, you've seen it in the video now thus far, so it should be giving a view of how it would work as a studio camera. I think it works okay. But there are two sides to the video and audio being the most important one, that is kind of a big limiting factor here when compared against the competition, both within and without its own product line, because as opposed to the new RX100 Mark VII and the G7X Mark III, this G5X is lacking a microphone in jack, which sucks. But I'm trying to remember that until those other two cameras, it was very, very rare that a point and shoot actually had microphone capabilities. So this, I mean, it's, it's par for the course for the last generations to not have it. The internal microphones on the camera are okay. They are pretty standard when you compare them to other cameras with similar capabilities. Here's what they sound like indoors. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. We're not gonna do that anymore because I don't like it, but let's see how all of this video functionality works when we mush it all together and turn it into a quick video slash vlogging test. <laughs> and welcome to the vlogging test of the Canon G5X Mark II. Now, earlier in the week, we did the G7X Mark III, and this is the other new Canon point and shoot that came out very recently. And actually, I like this more than I like the G7X Mark III, because if you've seen that video, you probably noticed that I don't like the G7X Mark III at all. So let's start the vlogging test. Now, something that right off the bat that this is missing that the G7X Mark III has is, I like that the G7X Mark III has a record button on the touchscreen. Sounds silly, but it's just something I like. So there we go. Vlogging test begin. Whoa. Okay, this is the vlogging test on the Canon G5X Mark II. Now, I've never actually used a G5X camera before in my life. This is a very new experience for me. And while it has a lot of the same problems that the G7X has, it also doesn't have dual pixel autofocus. It doesn't have the 3.5 millimeter audio in jack that the G7X does. Uh, I just find myself liking this camera more than I like the G7X Mark III for a couple of reasons. It's got the longer zoom lens, but it still has the same wide open aperture, still has the ND filter, still has the 4K. It still has a lot of the same stuff. And yes, it is more expensive, but I feel that this is like an actual camera that I could say, okay, here's a reason to buy it. Sony doesn't necessarily have a camera that can do what this can do. It does have the RX100 Mark, the six and seven, which the six doesn't really ever do it for me. I've never used the seven, very excited for it. But even then, those cameras at the wide end don't have 1.8. So this having an F 1.8 lens actually makes this one of the most intriguing and potentially like it, this is a fantastic video camera. Like this could be great if it had dual pixel autofocus. Oh, if the G5X had dual pixel autofocus, this would be my travel camera, like hands down. Now I've had nothing but problems with the G7X Mark III's autofocus. I'm really hoping that during this series of videos, during this series of tests I'm running, that I can find the autofocus in this camera is better because I like the G5X Mark II. And yeah, we've been recording. Oh, I'm not in focus right now, am I? I can't tell, it's hard to tell uh on the screen the screen's great though um but yeah this is the audio that's being recorded internal to the camera we've got all the stabilizations turned on i'm just happy to be on this one because this is a camera i like i like making videos about cameras i like i don't like talking about cameras i don't like because the whole point of my youtube channel is i like cameras i like talking about cameras so if i'm checking out a camera that i don't like it's like what, what are you doing man okay back to the video <laughs> back indoors now also Thank goodness that that intense heat wave is finally over. Ugh. I hate summer. The image quality and the uniqueness of the lens is absolutely the most exciting part about this camera. But what matters most to me, if I'm gonna like overall recommend this or even buy one myself, is how easy that quality is to get because ain't nobody got time to be messing with cameras that are a pain in the butt. The camera's just gotta work. And mostly it does a good job. It's vastly different design than the original G5X like we said in the beginning, but I actually kind of like how this turned out. I mean, it's got enough physical buttons. It feels great to hold. And I actually like this physical design more than any other point and shoot camera I've ever held, including my vaunted and favorite RX100 Mark V. I love 
the physical body of this camera. If you are into having a viewfinder, hooray, there is a pop-up little viewfinder here that you can use next to the flash. And unlike the original G5, the screen does flip up and not out. And it is also fully touch enabled, allowing for quick and efficient changing of menus using Canon's pretty nice user interface. So that's all well and good for setting up the camera, but after hitting record, much like the G7X, I mean, that's kind of where the cracks start to appear in the armor if you want to use this for online content creation. And the biggest problem I have with the G5X, say it with me, autofocus. The whole reason to get a Canon camera is to have good, reliable autofocus. I mean, that just means you have one less thing to worry about. It's so like right now, I've got two cameras running. I got to worry about the lights. I got to worry about the sun in the background. I got to worry about my tablet managing the camera. I need it to do, I can't be bothered. Like the more a camera needs me to fiddle with it, the less likely I'm going to buy it or recommend it to other people to buy. Now I do think the autofocus here works a little bit better than the other point and shoot, but it could be up to so many little variables. I don't have a scientific test to prove it. I mean, the two shouldn't be that much different in the end. I'm just getting better results with this one. I don't know why. But for the rest of what I need while recording, this hits all of the high notes. Useful and bright monitor for checking exposure and framing. And the biggest thing I've been impressed with so far, which is something that Canon almost never ever gets praised on is the stabilization. This camera has some pretty darn good stabilization built into it, and it works fantastically for smoothing out your footage. Like I currently use a Panasonic GH5, which is known for its stabilization. This is good, like shockingly good for a Canon camera. So let's say you decide to go out and purchase the G5X Mark II, because if you were to ask me which one to get between this and the G7X, I'd absolutely recommend this one easily. What does the ecosystem look like? Well, if you saw any of my other point shoot camera videos, uh, it's a point shoot. There isn't an ecosystem per se. It's an all-in-one package that should do everything you need without buying extra lenses or cages or anything. Now, if I were to make one recommendation, definitely buy more batteries. These cameras eat them. They just eat them like Tic Tacs. But at the end of the day, so what, right? So should you get the Canon G5X Mark II for video? Again, like I've said throughout the video, the big selling point of the G5X when you consider it against the rest of the point and shoot market, Sony, Panasonic, Canon, Olympus, everything, it's the uniqueness of its lens. The lens zooms more and it's just brighter than almost anything else on the market. And it's really the reason that I would recommend you buy this camera. Surprisingly enough, I actually really like the G5X Mark II but it's expensive, so I'm not sure that I'd actually recommend it unless you just needed a point shoot with that specific lens. If you're looking for another point shoot, if you don't necessarily need that fast zoom lens, I would not recommend either of the GX line of cameras. If you want a great dependable all-in-one camera, I would recommend the RX100 Mark V. I mean, I've got one used and I got it for very cheap and it will have 24 frames per second, it will have good autofocus, and it will have good slow motion, all of which this thing's lacking. But overall, if you do need this kind of lens, yeah, I'd recommend it. Thanks for watching.